All right, guys, welcome back to the uh, Rusty Beauty's Garage. There's Rusty, the shop mascot. And uh, here's Alin, the shop mascot over here, or at least his legs. Uh, we picked up where we left off yesterday, and uh, we're working on the brake lines going forward from the rear. So Alin's just uh, marveling at the uh, brake line work on the passenger side rail. He thinks it might have been fitted in situ or bent on the car as opposed to off the car. So he's playing around with that. Um, other than that, we'd have a bit of a cleanup out here. We've got our sort of our parts ready for the next phase of this uh, project after we get the brake lines done. Um, I think what we're gonna do after brake lines is we're probably gonna jump back on the, uh, the transmission and see if we can get that operating as it should be and getting that ready to go back in the car at some point in the future. In the meantime, while Alin's working on brakes, I'm gonna start working on changing out a bunch of stuff here in the engine bay, or at least maybe removing some things. So I do have a new uh, brake and clutch uh, master cylinders, so we could probably look at changing those out. I've got a new uh, ignition uh, wire set and new cap, so we can look at changing that out. I wanna get the fuel pump off because uh, I wanna either clean this one and reuse it, or I think I've got another one coming, an aftermarket one, which I'd prefer not to use. If, I, if the stock one is usable, I'd prefer to keep that if possible. So I'm gonna pull that off regardless, whether we fit the new one or the old one that still has to come off the car. So I'll probably do that while we're pulling all the ignition wires off the car. And uh, yeah, just some general things. Uh, radiator hoses we've got. Uh, we've got to bolt the radiator in, radiator in at some point. We've got uh, a radiator fan to install and a bunch of other stuff here in the engine bay. We've got a emergency bonnet uh, release kit to be fitted, uh, new heater water valve, some of it I won't be able to do because of this uh, two by four in the way that's holding up the engine currently, but we can do a few things in here at least while Alin's working on those brakes. So I'm gonna get crack a lacking. All right, just taking a little uh, break, first break of the day. So Alin's got all of the brake lines done with the exception of the one running from the master across. He just got it laid in here, but this is a big pain to get these uh, master cylinders out with the bottom bolt uh, being pretty inaccessible back in there. So we're seriously thinking about uh, dropping it from the pedal box inside the footwell to be able to get those bottom bolts out. It'll probably be easier than trying to struggle to get those bottom bolts out. Other than that, that's going well. Uh, change the spark plugs. They're just in there loosely. Remove the fuel pump. Uh, remove the coil. Um, we're going to probably put new uh, points in the distributor, a new rotor. Uh, unless we go to electronic ignition, I haven't decided on that yet. We are converting the car, the car from uh, positive ground to negative ground. Um, so that's underway. Uh, we are doing a generator to alternator conversion. So I just removed the generator. So it's looking a little bare over here. So I think what we're gonna do probably next is probably pull the radiator because we're gonna replace all the hoses we have a new thermostat. We have new hoses for back here as well. So we'll clean this area up a little bit. We removed the horns uh, because they were inoperative. We got up to peep once and that was it. Um, so new horns are uh, gonna have to be ordered for the car. But uh, yeah, it's um, looking better. We gotta get the belt out somehow. Gonna have to probably jack the engine up to be able to do that. We got a new a belt coming for the car. So other than that, anything else I'm missing? I don't think so. Anyway, we're taking more stuff off the car. Still have to do the, um, the uh, steering shaft. Uh, we still need new rubber uh, couplers. Um, I'm thinking of doing a solid mount on the bottom, but uh, we'll wait, I've got that on order and we'll figure out what we're gonna do as far as that's concerned. All right, that's it for now. That's the update. We're gonna take a quick break. All right, the, uh, the pedal box is out and that'll allow us to do a little bit of uh, maintenance in here. And um, we'll probably clean up the uh, pedal box or the, the bracket itself and uh, before we put the new cylinders in. So we'll probably do a quick wire brush and paint job on that. The lens laughing at me, but uh, I gotta do what you gotta do. So uh, we'll clean this area up as well and maybe give that a quick coat of the uh, Oxford red Rust-Oleum while we're in here. And maybe we'll see if we have any grommets. We can change this grommet out on the firewall. I'm not sure if Lynn might have one. I don't have any with me. 
And I'm not sure if I actually have a new line going to the gauge inside for the uh, oil pressure switch. Thought I might have ordered one, but maybe not. The oil pressure gauge line. So, all right. So we'll clean this up and uh, get it back reinstalled. All right, it's been a little while since the uh, last update, and to be quite honest with you, I've forgotten what we've done. <laughs> but uh, we did get this area cleaned up and the uh, bracket painted for the clutch and brake master. We did get the run, the line run for the brakes. So all the brake lines are done now, correct, Ellen? Yes. All the brake lines are done. So now we're working on the radiator and we're just installing it and then we pulled it back out because we remembered that we were gonna run an electric fan on the front of this as a pusher fan. So we're just in the process of mounting that on the, uh, the radiator. So we'll do that before we install it. Again, this car came to us with the radiator just loosely in place, no, bolt, no bolts holding it down. So anyway, we've got new uh, radiator hoses for that um, to install it, new bolts, hardware, etc. So that's looking good. There's the old brake lines there, all gone. So yeah, making pretty good progress. And we'll fill up some holes over here. Uh, put a new thermostat in, um, waiting for a bottom gasket. So that's just on there loosely. Obviously, as mentioned, all new hoses for the uh, radiator as well. So Alin also did a little bit of wiring cleanup over here while he was here, kind of waiting for uh, my paint to dry. So. Anyway, things are progressing. Oh, we've kind of got the clutch sleigh ready to go with a new line, and we got that on the bracket cleaned up. So that looks good. Anything over there to show you? No, not really. All right, there's the update. So just a bunch of random stuff, but we're working at it. Well, I came over to help Alin with the wiring, but he thinks he's okay. So <laughs> anybody knows me in wiring knows that's a joke, hopefully. Um, so while he's working on the customer's car, I'm actually a little bit early today to work on the TR4, but I figured I'd come over and I'd actually just do a little bit of uh, cleaning since I haven't really done any washing or cleaning of the car to get it sort of prepped for the eventuality of clear coat. And I figured uh, yesterday we were working on the engine bay out here and I thought, well, it's kind of dirty and grimy in here, so maybe I'll give this a quick wash down since this hasn't been even hit with any uh, soap and water yet. So I think we're just gonna do that today just to make this look a little bit better. I did order some horns yesterday or last night when I went home uh, because the existing horns are not working. So we've got some new uh, horns coming. Um, I did not really show you <clears throat> in very much detail what we completed yesterday. We did put the radiator back in loosely. Anyway, it's bolted in, but the hoses are actually missing a bypass hose, but we have the other two hoses. So we can probably get that back together mostly today. Uh, we were missing the gasket for the thermostat housing, so I, I've brought some gasket maker. We can get that done today. So there's a few little things we can do back here in the engine bay. I've actually brought a couple of spare fuel pumps I had at home. I'm still waiting on my fuel pump to be delivered, but I've got a couple of spares that I can probably put in here or use the spares to fix the original that came out of here. So there's a few things that I can do and tinker on while Alin's busy working on the uh, the wiring harness spaghetti over there. I am also going to try to, uh, as I mentioned, clean up the paint here on the body tub. And I thought I would just experiment uh, with my buffer and some compound. And again, uh, this is a learning process for me, this whole patina thing. Because I was thinking that if I actually go ahead and compound the car, that means that uh, when I get to the clear coat stage, it's obviously not going to stick if it's got any sort of silicone or polish or compound on the car. So that's going to mean that I have to rewash the car and probably, you know, with a couple uh, couple rounds of Dawn to get all the grease and wax and silicone off the car. Then we're going to also have to scrub it down with a uh, Scotch-Brite pad before we get to the clear coat stage. But I think that's the process. We hopefully won't run into an issue with the... Uh, clear coat sticking to the car or wanting to fish eye everywhere. So that's the plan anywhere. Compound and then a couple of rounds of cleaning and then the uh, scotch bright before clear. So we're gonna see how we can get this trunk to come up. Obviously you can see the license plate area is quite a bit brighter than the surrounding area. So it'd be interesting to see what the compound does on the car. It actually might even blend these section in sections in is where we repaired that with the new uh, Rust-Oleum paint. So we'll go ahead and we'll play around with the buffer a little bit to see how we can make this come up. That's the plan for the next few hours. 
one more surprising thing that I found, and I could see it actually when the car was parked in the shed, was that this car actually has <laughs> a TR250 stripe on it. If you can see that there, you can see the remnants of it, which doesn't make sense. I'll have to ask Keith, the uh, previous owner, the deal on this stripe because um, this is actually a short bulge hood. So there are two different hoods on the uh, TR4s, the short bulb, or uh, short, short bulge, which was quite rare. I think it was on the earlier cars. So you see how this bulge ends here while the long bulge ends further back towards the car. So my understanding is this hood, hood itself is fairly rare. I don't believe it's correct for this car. I know I had some discussions with Keith about it previously. But yeah, I, I can't believe I didn't see this stripe on the front of this bonnet at some point prior to this. That's kind of interesting. So we got a real ghost stripe here. Anyway, interesting. Not sure if you can see the difference between the right side and the left side in the camera but I can definitely see it here so that's kind of where we're trying to get to just to that uh, point where you can bring the paint back to where it's a little bit shiny and again we're gonna have to dull it down with a scotch bright prior to uh, clear coat but at least it'll uh, bring the color back to where it was originally and uh, Hopefully once the clear is applied, it'll actually bring the shine back similar to what it is right now. I mean, it's not super shiny, but it's not super dull and chalky either. So we're gonna do the left side here. Pad's pretty dirty, uh, some of the compound sticking. So that's a little bit problematic on this car. It's so bad, so badly oxidized that the pads are gonna suffer, but yeah, it's an old pad. So we'll just uh, continue on. Maybe I'll try to clean it a bit, but uh, let's do the left hand side and we'll come back and we'll take a quick look at that. Here it is, uh, driver's side is done and trunk is done. And that's about as far as we're gonna get today. I think it definitely looks better. Again, I'm not sure whether this is coming through in the camera or not, but it definitely looks better than what I started with. So trunk definitely came up uh, much shinier. That's mostly original paint there, that's why. And then of course we have a lot of blends over here and that Rust-Oleum doesn't shine up that great, especially when we dulled it down with the Comet. So. I think it's looking better. Uh, engine bay cleaned up a little bit. We waxed the uh, fenders on the inside, cleaned those down. So I think that's looking a little neatier and tidier. So I think we'll call as good for now and then we'll go indoors. It's getting a little hot out here. I think we'll go inside the garage and start on another project. All right, Alin has just uh, finished a successful um, overdrive video where we managed to get things operating as they should. So stay tuned to see that on the Rusty Beauties channel. Um, 
Right now, what we're doing is we're taking the good components or the new components, basically, because the previous owner had basically installed all new components in this throwout bearing, uh, bushings, cross shaft, cross drilled, et cetera, et cetera. So we're actually removing the components from the four speed and putting it into the overdrive transmission. So that's what we're up to at the moment. So we're getting crack a lacking. Yep. All right. Thursday in the Rusty Beauty shop. And uh, we've got the overdrive ready to go. Don't pay attention to the RTV uh, <laughs> smeared on here. We actually split the case and we had actually a fairly significant oil leak coming from the rear at the brake ring. So we actually split it again, RTV'd it, and this is just the excess that squished out and we've just kind of smoothed that over. So disregard that. But anyway, we are working on getting the transmission back in the car. And Alin's just uh, got the clutch in and centralized. He's just torquing down the uh, bolts to 20 foot pounds, as according to the manual. And uh, we're very shortly hoping to get the transmission back in place, which will allow us then to uh, get rid of the uh, two by four holding the engine up once we get that all uh, back in and uh, attached to the rear uh, transmission mount. Two by four is out already. That's what I said. It's over there and it'll be nice to have it out completely. <laughs> it's been in there for a few weeks now. Anyway, we'll be back in a bit for an update. Yeah, I was missing my two. I thought that the two by four was to keep your bonnet from closing. <laughs> That's what I swear to God. That's what I thought it was. No. All right, just coming up to uh, 6 p.m. And the transmission's installed and we've got it on the back bracket. Um, tightened down. Elin's now just fashion, uh, fastening the plate at the bottom of the bell housing. And there's a couple of bolts there that actually hold the clutch slave uh, in place as well, or the clutch slave bracket in place. So I've just given him the uh, clutch slave bracket and he's working on installing that. We have a problem here. What's the problem? <laughs> it doesn't fit. Well, okay, we'll be back. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah. So All right, we've got the uh, drive shaft bolted up, and one of my <laughs> one of my viewers commented that uh, he wanted to make sure I had enough engagement of the bolts through the nylock nuts. And as you can see, you've got quite a few threads showing through the nylock. So I think we're good to go there. They are a special bolt for the drive shaft attachment to the front and rear. So that is done. Lynn's now working on that. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to see it very well, but he's working on that slave attachment down there to the bell housing. So we did sw um, swatch, uh, swip the, oh my God. Mm -hmm. We did swap the slave cylinder around. Uh, I think the braided cable was interfering, was it? Yeah. So we've now swapped that around and it seems to be fitting a little bit better. Yeah, but now the bleeder is lower than the feed. Yeah, the bleed screw should be technically on top, but really it didn't matter really which way we put the slave in. It's kind of parallel. It's not really at the top either way. So anyway, we'll do our best to get that bled when the time comes. All right. Okay, we kind of figured out um, the issue with the bracket. Um, Anyway, long story short, we just have it arranged uh, incorrectly. So we just aligned it basically with the push rod from the, uh, the um, rod on the cross shaft and it needs to come out. So looks like we have the uh, bracket not oriented correctly. So we'll fix that and all would be good in the hood. I told you it wasn't correct. <laughs> all right. Okay, while well, Alin's doing the uh, clutch slave bracket, I'm going to reinstall this uh, oil feed to the gauge line. And this guy was leaking before, or at least the fitting was, and it looks like an original line. So we've gone with a new uh, Breda stainless steel one here. Uh, it's a classic old uh, Moss reproduction. There is the, uh, the Moss number. So we'll go ahead and install this to the line and then we'll fit it up to the filter housing and just keep in mind that there are two copper washers and then this uh, special nut that uh, attaches this to the actual filter on the car. All right, we're gonna fit the uh, new mechanical fuel pump. So there is the uh, part number 
from Moss. I think that's the Moss part number. So it doesn't look like a Moss sticker. There it is, made in China. So I'm not sure how long this pump will actually last, but we're gonna fit it to the car and we're gonna carry a spare, a spare AC pump, I believe, that we'll have to rebuild. Anyway, let's unbox it and see what it looks like. Also, as part of my parts hoard today, we got a new air duct for the uh, radiator and uh, it doesn't look like it made the uh, trip very well. It's already torn here in pieces, torn away. And I don't particularly like the finish. If this is the exterior of the panel, which I think it is, I'd prefer it to look like this on the outside. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, we'll look at that in more detail at a later date. All right, there's the new uh, fuel pump unpacked. It does actually have the priming lever, which is good. I like the idea of that. Uh, I believe it has a nylon screen on the inside of this bowl. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to change that out for the brass screen. Always keep your brass screen because with the ethanol and the fuel today, that nylon screen will get deformed pretty quickly. So we're going to go ahead and uh, make some upgrades to this pump using some of the original parts. It does come with new ferrules for the lines, which is quite nice. And it comes with a gasket. All right, so here's what we're doing with the uh, pump. We're taking some of the bits from the uh, old pump, so the brass screen versus the uh, nylon screen. And we may take the uh, actual old gasket as well and fit that into the, uh, into the new pump. So I think that's about all we're gonna do. I was thinking about trying to fit maybe the glass bowl along with this uh, framework, which I like better than this plasticky knurled nut bit down here at the bottom. So I might actually try to upgrade that to the old style as well. So we'll see if that works out. If not, we'll just stick with the Chinese bits. All right, welcome back. Now, Friday at the Rusty Beauties shop. And I think we left off uh, talking about uh, fuel pumps yesterday. And I got this reproduction uh, pump from China. And um, what I've decided to do is swap out a few of the components. So what I've done is I've used the uh, brass screen from an original pump. I've also used the new uh, a glass bowl from the original pump. The Chinese bowl is actually a little bit shorter, so that it means you couldn't use the old style uh, fastener for the bottom here, this little uh, rose wheel type arrangement. So I've gone to the old bowl and the old fastener uh, to make this work and the old gasket to fit the top of the bowl properly. So slightly modified, but I think that will work better than uh, what I received. Uh, we do have a couple of pumps here we can use as uh, spares, so we'll carry at least one of them in the boot just for backup. And now I've got the uh, piping to attach, and I've got the new, uh, as I mentioned, we've got the new ferrules, or olives, or whatever you want to call them, here for those. So we'll go ahead and apply those now, and then we'll get this back on the car and move on to the next job. All right, so Alin's first job of the day is to uh, weld this bracket back on that holds the hose for the clutch master uh, that goes into the clutch slave. It's uh, come off the frame. We're not going to say rusted off. It just came off. <laughs> anyway, he's going to uh, modify or make a new bracket for that and get that in place so we can add the line to the new clutch master and hook up the line to the clutch slave. Okay, I don't know where I left off, but um, fuel pump is in. Don't know if I showed you that. Uh, just adding the clevis pins in and the uh, cotter pins for the push rods. Uh, I'm just working on, so the thermostat housing is on and we're working on the hosing. I'm working on the bypass hose at the moment. Uh, Alin is actually working on the alternator conversion. So here is the alternator. He's gonna pull the pulley off the generator stick it on the alternator. We'll probably have to do a little work to get that to fit. Uh, here's the Moss part number for the alternator. And we got the plug kit as well. I don't know where that is, but uh, we got the plug kit for the back of the alternator. Anyway, um, we'll show you that when that's installed. I believe lynn has got a, uh, a video on this already of installing an alternator on a TR4. I'll put a link to the video in the description below if you want to see that video. All right. Okay, just a quick update for you, uh, kind of moving along here. So Alin's still working on the uh, generator to alternator conversion project, and I've been working on the heater hoses. So we've got these hoses on up here. We have this hose for the bottom hose to this area here ready to go, although we're not going to install it yet because we're 
talking about changing out the rubber donuts on the steering shaft or maybe even converting the lower to a solid mount or actually a universal joint. So uh, without the hoses there for the radiator, it gives us a little bit more clearance to work in this area. So we figured we'd just leave those off temporarily. I did on this side of the car, uh, replace the bulkhead heater hoses and the heater valve. So those are looking good. I am a little bit concerned about the heater valve. It is a little bit loose in its place because you get to a certain point on the heater valve where you can't make a full turn because you run out of threads basically or you can't tighten it anymore with the, without the threat of actually snapping it off. So we've had to tighten it, turn it back a little bit. We did use some thread sealant on it so hopefully it won't leak out of there. So that's done. Uh, there are the old hoses there. On the inside of the car we have the new hoses here for the heater box replacement. So those two little hoses under there, it's a good time, a good time to change those out while the dash is not in. So got new hoses for there, plus new, new clamps for there as well, standing by. Um, I think what I'm gonna do now that I've made a mess under the car with a little bit of coolant, um, I'm gonna get under the car and we're gonna drain the oil and get some uh, new VR1 2050 in there. I did do a lookup on the filter cross-reference. So that Unipart you know, GFE 148 that's on there, if I cross-reference that, I like Wix filters. So uh, there's the Wix part number, 51374. So we got a new filter for that. So I'll go ahead and I'll do the oil. And uh, I've got the coil here standing by. I've just cleaned up the coil a little bit. It was obviously working because the car fired up on it. So we're gonna put the coil back on and get that situated. So yeah, things are just uh, moving along. We're just uh, listening to some tunes and working on the car, having a good day out here. So I'll bring you back after a few more things have been added to the car. All right, we added a little bit of uh, bling to the car after we uh, used the secondhand uh, aluminum or alloy cover from my TR3. So we've put that to good use here with a new uh, silicone gasket. Um, I'm on to replacing the plug wires and we have a new distributor cap here front moss there's a part number here are the ignition wires um taking a look at the distributor cap and i'm not really happy about it, it looks pretty cheap if you ask me so uh, particularly the um the center uh, brush or spring or what do you want to call it it looks really really cheap so i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to clean up the old lucas cap we'll put this cap in the uh in the boot for a backup for a spare and we'll clean this cap up, put the new wires in, and go with that. All right, new plug wires are installed with the old Lucas cap. Uh, we'll put a new rotor in. I think we're gonna probably end up upgrading probably to electronic ignition anyway, Petronics, uh, at a later date. But uh, right now we just got a new set of points, condenser, and rotor in there. And obviously the old cap with the new wires and the old coil seemed to be working fine, so we'll keep the old sport coil from Lucas. All right, just coming up to about uh, 7.30 p.m. or so, and uh, we're still making pretty good progress. We are just uh, working on the clutch uh, master to slave line. Alin's uh, welded that bracket in down there. You can see the line just hooked up to it. So we're just bending that. Uh, by hand, wherever that has gone to. I can't see it. Oh, here it is over here. So it looks like a fairly complex line, but uh, that will go on the car next. Other than that, I um, can't remember where I left off, but uh, horns are on, our new horns are on. The alternator conversion is on. I was just actually cleaning this area up over here a little bit. Emergency uh, bonnet release is on. I already showed you the heater valve and heater hoses. So that's looking pretty good. New valve cover. I did put these hoses in underneath the uh, bulkhead. So those are looking good. Uh, we still have to put the uh, radiator hoses on for top and bottom. Uh, I do have a new emergency brake cable that we're going to put on the car. So that's still to do. Uh, got some rubber floor mats there for later when we start working on the interior. Still haven't ordered a carpet kit yet. So I have to do that pretty soon, I would say. Up on the uh, dash, we have a um, ignition switch uh, because this car did not come with an ignition switch. Actually, it had the switch, but no barrel in the switch and no key. So that will come in handy. 
And uh, this other thing over here, what is this? I can't remember what this is. Oh, that is the uh, alternator plug. So we'll get that hooked up and wired up eventually. So getting pretty close to having to bring the dash back from my place. <clears throat> and we'll uh, get the dash back installed and start working on the wiring. Um, the doors still need to be done. We need to take apart the doors because the glass uh, has kind of come out of the track and out of the channels and it's pretty rattly. So we'll end up doing that sooner than later as well. But we are running out of jobs. Like I said, our box of parts down here is getting uh, significantly smaller, which is a good thing. Radiator shroud has to go on. I'm not very happy with that piece. I don't know if I mentioned that already, but I think what we're going to try to do is install it. Uh, and I may truck bed liner the outside of it to give it that sort of uh, wrinkly, a little bit of a pebbled look to it, since I'm not happy with the exterior finish of it. So we'll probably end up doing that. So that's the update for now. Things are moving along. All right, end of night update. Um, like I said, a few videos today, but hopefully you can get the idea of how we're progressing on this project. So uh, we're calling it a night out here. The next thing for us to do, I think, is to probably... Uh, we're at the point where we can actually bleed the hydraulic system, so the, cr the clutch and brake systems. Uh, I am going to be running DOT5 since I've got all new lines and fittings. So I've got to pick up some DOT5 for that. Uh, as mentioned, we did change the engine oil today. We're still waiting on doing the, uh, the radiator, so that'll be another day. Other than that, we don't have a lot more to do uh, mechanically. Um, the rear emergency brake cable we still need to do. And then, of course, we can sort of move into the interior uh, compartment and start doing the dash and the wiring. Um, anything else you can think of? No. Yeah. Just start driving. <laughs> yeah, we're not that far away from uh, starting it back up. And uh, obviously, the big thing was the clutch. Um, and we're going to be interested to see how the new transmission and the new uh, clutch, slave, master, etc. works out. Hopefully, we can actually get it into gear and moving under its own power. So... Anyway, it's coming along nicely. Um, like I said, we are checking things off the list. Did Not the, the alternator? I showed him my alternator and uh, looks beautiful. Showed him my nice red horns to match the car. I, I bought them specifically <laughs> as red. Uh, we're kind of figuring out the whole uh, battery cables uh, because we're switching obviously from positive ground to negative ground. So um, we've got that sort of figured out. I do have a few new cables here for the solenoid to starter. I do have a high torque starter coming. It uh, arrived at my mailbox today, so we've got to still install that. So but we're not going to use the solenoid because the high torque starter does doesn't need require one. it. Yeah. But we're going to just put the two cables together on one mm -hmm. of the studs and yep. keep it there for yep. dummy. So we still need to put our radiator shroud on at some point as well, um, and a few other things. We need to wire up our electric fan. So yeah, there's lots of jobs left to do, but it is coming along and uh, we're crossing things off the list, as I mentioned. So we'll put an end to this video for tonight. I'll upload this so you can see where we're at and then we'll get out here when we can. Uh, not sure if we're going to be out here over the next couple days. It is the weekend here, so uh, we'll get out here when we can. All right, have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and thanks for subscribing. See you on the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching and commenting. We'll see you on the next one.